Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maths on African Motives. Uh, still on our A-level mathematics, uh, still on the linear law uh, that is uh, to reduce a certain function to a linear law. We are going to consider another exam question uh, that we have here. Uh, let us see how we have given this. The table below gives measured values uh, of the variables x and y. Okay, so the variables there are x and y, all right? The part of x and the part of y. There we've got x, and there we also have x, okay? Which are related by the equation in this form, in, in this format that you're given here, which is y is equal to ax plus b over what? b over x. Okay, then we are given the values of X and the values of Y. Not to say these ones, they can draw any graph. No, these are just the values that you're given. Okay, so the question was find the approximate values of the constants, which is A and B, by plotting the graph of X, Y against the graph of what? Against the graph of x squared, I, I mean, uh, plotting x, y against x squared. All right, so it's actually this one. Uh, if you are given this uh, this type of equation here, it's an advantage already you are told how to present this. But even though you are told, you have to find this, right? Even though you're told, because uh, here we are supposed to have this, uh, like uh, where was it taken from actually to have this? All right, remember what I said. From the linear law, we are supposed to have the equation in, in the form of a straight line. Y is equal to mx plus c. Y is equal to mx plus c. We can properly see the gradient and we can properly see the y-intercept. This is the format that we need. Here we can't say this here is the part of mx, no. We can't say this is the part of it because here we've got what? We've got X, we also have X there. So the best that we can properly see is to clear the fractions first so that we can properly see where is going to remain, where are we going to remain with X? So we are going to multiply uh, by X. Remember this is same as over one, over one. So you're gonna clear by multiplying by X each and every term. So X times Y in this case, this is X times Y, which is going to be X, Y is equal to A, x times x, this is going to give us ax squared. It's ax times x, so it will be ax squared. The x here and the x will cancel, so you remain with what? With a b like that. So this is where it is coming from. Like I said, on the original function, this one, you were supposed to have the x-axis and the y-axis from y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, but this is not what we have here. Because if we check, we, if we are to write in this format of y is equal to mx plus c, we can see that here the b is now a constant just like the c. So the variable that is affected now is this, which is the x squared, which is affected by a as a constant. So x, remember x is a variable. So x is squared is now representing what? our x, that's why we are given to plot x, y against x squared. The x squared is now replacing x. In place of x, we are now having what? x squared. So we're gonna have the graph here of x squared against what? In place of y, what do we have in place of y? In place of y, we've got x, y, not y. This is x, y, x, y is equal to. So in place of this y, we're gonna have what? x, y. So that will be the graph that we need in this case. So in order for us to have the values of A and B, which are the approximate values in actual sense, we are going to see that here M, which is affecting X from the X and the X squared, what is affecting X squared here, it's A. So it means A is equal to what M represents. And what does M represent? M represents the gradient. So to find A, we simply need to find the gradient, simply the change in Y over 
the change in x. First, we find a. What about b? b is same as c. And what does c represent? c represents the y-intercept. So by finding the y-intercept of the graph, we have found the value of c. But in this case, is the intercept of x, y. The x, it will be the x, y intercept. Instead of being y intercept, it's going to be the x, y intercept. Okay? So this is what we need. As we can see on the graph, if this is x, we've got y. So we mark our points 1 versus 12,5. That is for x and y. But this is for x, y and x squared. So meaning the table on its own is going to change. The table is going to change because we need x squared, not x. We need x, y, not y on this graph. This is the graph that you're supposed to have now. x, y against x squared. So this has to change. So meaning to say we are going to have the graph, uh, going to have our table x squared and what? And x, y. All right, so this is what we are going to have. Is we are supposed to have a normal graph of x versus y, but it has changed because of what uh, the format that we have now uh, represented. So what does it mean? It means that we are going to have our table from each and every value that we are given there, uh, the part of x squared, meaning to say each and every value of x is going to be squared. We are going to square this, we square this, we square this, we square this up to the last up to the last term. That is the idea. So one squared is gonna give us what? One squared, that's a one. Uh it's just, this is one, two, three, four, guys. So one squared is gonna be a one. Uh two squared, that's a four, two times two, three squared, that's a nine, four squared, that's sixteen, five squared is twenty-five. All right, so this is just our ending point here. So you can just remove this. All right, sorry for that. Okay, uh, no problem. So uh, like I said, the other part is gonna be the product of X and Y. That is what we need on this graph. It is drawn from X squared and XY, which is the product of X and Y. So we need to multiply XY is the product of these that is the product, x times y. So it's 1 times 12,5, which is what? 12,5. That is the product of x and y. So this will be 12,5. Uh, All right? You move. So this table is drawn according to the, to the condition. Does not, it does not mean that this condition is going to remain. We are going to have another condition. Analyze your question and see how you can have it in the form of a linear function. Once you can have it in this format, this year, you change it from what you are given there. Just like that, all right? Let's move on to the other pair. Remember it's x, y, so it's two times seven comma four, two times seven, which is 14. Uh, so this will be 14 comma zero, which is just what? Uh, 14, we do the same thing up to the last term, uh, this is x, y, 3 times 5, comma 5, uh, which is 16, comma 5. All right, so this will be uh, 16, comma 5. We move on to the other term, uh, the product of x and y here, 4 and what? 4 and 5, which is going to be a 20. 4 times 5, that will be a 20. Uh, the other one, the last one, it's 5 versus uh, 4, comma 9, which is 25, comma uh, 24,5 actually, all right, like that. So meaning to say, uh, we are going to draw a graph of these values according to your suitable scale. So you're gonna have x, y on the y axis and x squared on the what? On the x axis. So this is what you're gonna have. x squared on the x axis, x, y squared on the what? On the y axis. All right, so this is what you're gonna have just like this. Uh, just as for me, guys, I'm just going to have a sketch, but you're supposed to draw this accurately. So here, yeah, because of the instruments that I'm using uh, or this board that I'm using, it's not going to be uh, okay for me to have this accurately, but I'm just going to show you a sketch. But like I said, please do this accurately. Your graph must be accurately drawn. All right. 
So our x axis, remember, is represented by what? By x squared. This is what we have x squared on the x axis. x from x squared, y, x, y. That is the idea there. So this will be uh, x squared and this will be x, y. All right. So as we can see, on the x squared axis, we have got 1 up to 25. So you can even use a scale of 5, 10. All right. So that's a 0 here. Uh, 5, uh, 10, let's say 15, uh, 20, 25, 30, and so on. All right. Then on the x, y axis, all right. On this x, y axis, this one, uh, the highest value there is 24,5. The biggest is 12,5. All right. So you can even use five also. It's, it's, it can was this is like 25, 25, 25, right? So you can use five, five, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25. Yeah, you can even use that one. All right. So what you do is that you mark your points accordingly. Properly mark your points. All right. So you need to mark your points properly. Uh, maybe one is two boxes. I don't know according to the number of boxes that you use. One versus uh twelve comma five, which may be somewhere there. You mark your point. All right. Four versus fourteen, which might be somewhere around here. Nine versus sixteen comma five, maybe it's somewhere around there. Sixteen versus twenty. You mark them properly on your graph. Right. Twenty five. Uh, versus twenty four comma five, maybe it's somewhere there. All right, then you join. All right, as for me, guys, this is not a straight line. I can properly see that this of mine is not a straight line. All right, so, but anyways, this is what I'm just going to do, guys. You mark your points like that, the way that I was showing you, then you join them, all right? So here, I'm just going to join something like this, all right? But you're supposed to mark your points like uh, one versus this value, uh, four versus this value, nine versus 16,5, 16 versus 20, 25 versus, and you mark them properly on your graph paper, then you join them. So by joining, you are here drawing a straight line, a straight line. So you can even extend that straight line. Why extending? Because we need this intercept. Remember, we say that intercept there is the value of B, the XY intercept, just like the Y intercept where the line passes. The y-intercept is the value, is the C. So C represented by B represents what? The xy-intercept. So the xy-intercept of your graph, uh, your graph was going to approximately, it was going to pass at 12 there, right? This was going to be at 12. So guys, like I said, make sure that you draw properly your graph. Properly, all right? So that was the y-intercept there, uh, which is 12. So B is equal to 12, which is uh, representing the x y intercept all right just like this is our y intercept but according to the uh, to this graph it's x y intercept because this is the x y axis all right remember what i said about a i said a is going to be taken from where from m and what does m represent from a straight line m from a straight line represents the gradient the change in y over the change in x so for that one don't worry even if the points are not clear there Take these points that are on the table. They give you the exact answer for the gradient. Don't worry about that. They give you the exact answer. Imagine that this is X and this is Y. How do you determine the gradient? Just, just, just take it that way. How do you determine the gradient? You have got points in this case. 1 and versus 12,5. It's a point. And you have got another point. 4 versus four, uh, 14. This one, it was 14. 4 versus 14. It's another point. How do you find the gradient? The change in Y over the change in X. The same way we find our gradient is the same way we're going to have the value of A because A represents the gradient. So A is simply going to be the gradient. We talk about the Y values. We subtract this value minus this value. So it's going to be 12,5 minus the Y value of that, of that side over the x minus the x which is they are yes they are x squared but just take them like x and y so that you understand this all right so this will be one uh minus what one minus four like that so that's the value of a which is your gradient so if you use your calculator properly 
this was going to give you a half. So that means we have the value of A and the value of B from this function that we are given from the linear form. We changed the function. A linear, how, how can it be written as a linear? Because we are used to that linear function. We are very, very much familiar to that. So once an equation or once a function is reduced to a linear function, you can play around the way that you want. You are used to a linear function. You know how to determine the x and y intercept. You know how to determine the gradient from your all level mathematics. So that's why we are bringing this into a linear by having it in an in, 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 into a linear function. As you can see, this was a straight line at the end. You ended up drawing a straight line. That's a linear function, which means we've got uniform or the same uh, gradient throughout. That's the B. Uh, that's the idea. All right. So uh, meaning to say here, if even if we are to substitute here uh, our equation uh, by having the values of A and B, it simply means this was supposed to be written as Y is equal to, remember, A was a half. So this is simply half of X plus B. Remember, B was 12. So this is 12 over X. This is how the original function was supposed to be written as from the values of A and B that we just calculated. So that is uh, how your questions might be given. We just hope for more questions of this nature and other typical questions to come from Mason African Motives till we meet again.